guys, Sean C. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. They can go out today, see the things came out, see the things are on sale today. Today though, new release wise, some of the big things that come out is uh, John Wick Chapter 3. And with that one, I know there's a number of different retail exclusives of that one. I believe Target has an exclusive uh, steelbook, Blu-ray steelbook. And then at Best Buy, they have an exclusive 4K steelbook. And I believe, I'm pretty sure, Walmart has one that comes with a little coin, like the, the coin that you know his character has in the film. I'm pretty sure. Also, uh, The Dead Don't Die, that one released today, as well as uh, the live action version of Aladdin. And I believe Target has a digibook of that. And then Best Buy has a steel book. And also, though, the original, uh, you know, animated uh, Aladdin comes out for the first time today on 4K. And I know that that one has a, you know, digibook at Target, you know, and a uh, steel book at uh, Best Buy for that one. Also, though, a whole bunch of the um, uh, Pixar films released today on the, you know, for four, on 4K for the first time. I believe with that, too. And with a lot of those ones, Best Buy has a bunch of different exclusive steelbooks, I'm pretty sure, for those. Also, though, at the end of this video is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews uh, for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really, really cool stuff. And as always, too, leave me comments below. You know, let me know what you know what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed. Uh, you know, what you guys thought of them, if you guys have seen any of them. Also, if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And right here though on the front of the store they have a standee for Aladdin here. And it's $34.99 for the 4K Ultra HD edition here of the original animated film. This one includes though a filmmaker gallery book and storybook on this one. It actually has a really cool cover on this one, the different cover, because this is the standard uh, 4K and, and Blu-ray cover. But the standard uh, 4K one is uh, $29.99 for that one, and then $24.99 for the standard uh, Blu-ray of that one. Here's a closer look as well at the, the uh, you know, the book that's in included in this one. Then it's uh, for the live action film. That one's uh, $24.99 for that one. And then I'll look on the other side. But when it came to the live action one, I really liked it. I actually thought that was actually pretty well done. Here, though, is the, um, the uh, 4K edition, though, of the, uh, you know, the live action film. Their exclusive one here has a limited edition uh, filmmaker gallery book. And this one, and it has, a diff like I said, a different cover, is on this one as well. And you see the genie down here at the bottom, and Aladdin and Princess Jasmine. And like I said, I really did like this one. And then um, the 4K, standard 4K one is uh, $29.99 for that one. Other than that, though, we'll head over to this section, though, to see if they have the uh, John Wick. But in the actual section in Target, though, they did have the 4K of John Wick Chapter 3, and that one was $24.99. And they also had the exclusive edition, the Blu-ray Steelbook edition, and that one was $24.99 as well. Like I said, though, uh, I believe Best Buy has a 4K Steelbook of that one. Also, though, they did have a whole bunch more copies of the exclusive edition, the exclusive Digibook of Aladdin, uh, you know, the animated film, and the, um, you know, live action film on 4K. Into Walmart we go. And over here today, though, I don't see any exclusives of Aladdin, but the 4K one here is uh, $29.96 for that one, and that's $22.96 for the standard uh, Blu-ray edition of that, and then $19.96 for the DVD, and then of the original animated film on 4K, that one's $29.96, and then $24.96 for the Blu-ray uh, of that one. But also, though, here with John Wick, the uh, DVD of that one is uh, $14.96, and then the uh, Blu-ray is uh, $19.96, and they do have one of the John Wick 4K exclusives and that one's $24.96 and like I was saying though this one comes with a, a coin in this one it comes with a replica adjuster coin in this one so that's really cool that one like is that said that's their Walmart exclusive edition for that one and then other than that today though uh, Supernatural that one released and that one's a uh, $34.96 for that one and then uh, let's see any of the other things today I think this one the Adventures of D uh, Dolly and Spanky I think was today and that one's 996. This one's strength. I think this name in today for uh, 1996 and this Jim Gaffigan movie. If you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one was. This one here called Being Frank. I don't know much about this one, but if you guys have seen this one, let me know if this one is worth picking up. And that one, like I said, is 1496. This one here is, um, I believe, came out today as well. This one called Wise Man. You know, I don't know another one. I don't know anything about. It. I know Danny Trejo is in this one. 
If you guys have seen that, let me know how that one was. Also, the uh, Mayday release, this Michael Pere film, which I thought this was actually kind of a cool movie about like on this airplane and everyone like all of a sudden people started like going vanishing on the plane. They were trying to figure out where they were and everything. And then they do have The Dead Don't Die here as well for $17.96 on DVD. It doesn't seem like they have any uh, Blu-ray copies of this one here as far as I can tell. And I also noticed over here though, some of the other things that released, I think these were the 4Ks though of uh, the, the, you know, the Pixar ones like Finding Dory, um, let's see, Brave, Cars and Cars 2. Doesn't seem like they have any of those ones out. But 4K though, uh, the other one that came out today was Casino and that one's $17.96 was a really good price for a 4K release. And I, I said I believe that one was today and I think there is an exclusive of this at Best Buy, we'll have to see. Also though, I think Rambo might have been this week or last week. I can't remember for sure, but that one's $17.96 for that one. Also, like uh, last Tuesday, the one location I went to didn't have all the movies out. So let's see any of the other different ones over here. I noticed a couple ones here that I didn't see the other one have out. Like this movie here, Derailed. This one's only $9.96. This one looks kind of interesting. I might get this one. Like it's all set on like this um, subway car thing and it looks kind of interesting. Like I said, I might get this one. Also, um, the wind, uh, the wind demons of the prairie. This one, which was a um, Scream Factory release, that one was last week. I did see the selfie man. I did get that one. This one, Dark Within, for $9.96. I don't think I saw this one last week either. I am going to be talking about Nightmare Cinema at the end of this video, but I really, really like this one a lot. And then uh, Dolls. This was another one. I talked about this one a couple weeks back. All these ones seem to be $9.96. Let's see, though. I think one of the other things I, th I think that I might not have shown was Room for Rent with Lynn Shea, I believe. But other than that, though, that seems to be all of the major different things I see in here today. They do also have, though, The Alienist here. We're going to be talking about this one at the end of this video as well. That one's a $22.96 for that. But other than that, though, like I said, that seems to be all the major different things I see over here today. Yeah, but in there, though, I got that derailed movie. Like I said, don't know much about it, but this one did sound, you know, kind of interesting. If you guys have seen this one, though, let me know in the comments below, though, what you guys thought of this one. And this past weekend, the only movie that I saw in theaters was It Chapter 2. I will say, I don't want to say too much about this one, but it basically, though, is the characters, you know, who were kids in the first movie. This is them 27 years later, now dealing with Pennywise, who has come back to the town, and they're all called back by the one character, uh, Mike, and he's, like, calling them all back into the town to deal with this oath that they made. If, you know, Pennywise ever comes back, they're going to come back together to fight him, to get rid of him again. And that's essentially what it is. I'll say, though, uh, you know, I know review-wise there have been some mixed reviews on this one. I honestly thought it was really well done all around. I thought, you know, the casting on all the adult actors was really good in this one. I thought, too, it was really cool. I'm not going to say who they are, but there's one cameo in the beginning of the movie, which I was I didn't realize that it was this specific person until, like, after I watched the movie. And then it, it occurred to me, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, that's who that was. And there's also another cameo in the movie, which I was really excited to see as well. Like I said, I'm not saying who they are. But it was really cool, so definitely be on the lookout for the one in the beginning. But then the other one, you're going to know right away who it is. But I just thought it was really cool. But I all around, though, really, really liked the movie. I thought that it still had some really, you know, because I read some reviews that said it wasn't that creepy. I honestly thought there was some really creepy stuff in this one. Like, all around, though, I really liked it. If you guys saw It Chapter 2, you know, let me know in the comments below, though, what you know what you guys thought of the film or what movies you saw this past weekend, if you guys got to see anything. Into Best Buy we go. And right here though, they have a standee right in the very front advertising the movie. And here's their exclusive one here. This is a 4K Ultra HD Steelbook here of the live action one. That one's $34.99 for that one here. And then it's uh, $29.99 for the 4K edition here, the standard 4K. And then uh, $22.99 for the standard edition uh, Blu-ray of that one. We'll look over here though in the other area to see the other exclusives there. But they do have here on the other side, though, the Steelbook Edition here as well of the uh, original animated film here. And that one's uh, $34.99 here as well. Here's a look, though, inside of this as well. But over here, though, we'll see 
what exclusive ones they have, like for John Wick. Yeah, here's the John Wick one, like I was saying. And they actually only have one more here left for that one. This is the 4K Ultra HD one. This is a really cool image on this. This one's uh, $29.99 for that one, $19.99 for the Blu-ray. And then uh, I think the standard 4K is $24.99, I believe, here. And yeah, here at $24.99. And they have Casino here for $19.99 on 4K. This is actually the first place I've seen the Dead Don't Die on Blu-ray. Everywhere else, like Target and Walmart, only had the DVDs of that one. I'm going to be talking about this one at the end of this video as well. And they do have one of the, um, you know, the Casino uh, Limited Edition 4K uh, Steelbooks here. And that one's uh, $24.99 for that one. That's a pretty cool image on this one here. But let's see on the other side, though, if there's anything else over here. Probably in the actual section, though, is where they're going to have the um, all the Pixar ones. Yeah, they do have another one of the Steelbooks here as well for the animated film. Like I said, that was $34.99 for that one. Well, over here in the actual section, though, they do have a standee, and they have more of the uh, John Wicks over here as well, uh, 4Ks. Like I said, these ones were $29.99. Let's see, though, if they have a bunch of these um, Pixar ones, because I know a lot of these released today. I just don't see any of them right over here. I don't see any of the Pixar ones. Let's see, these ones were all from before, like the Toy Story ones. Uh, this is, I think it's the first time I've seen this in, in here. This has been out for a while though, the Hannibal one. I see the Incredibles, oh, so it seems like a lot of these are gone, like Cars 3. I actually think, I don't think that's a new steelbook though. Maybe they put them over here on the other side, because there's some of them, like John Wick's like mixed in over there. So let's see if they're over here on this side. They put them over this area. Yeah, so here's more of them. I don't know. It's weird. I don't see any of those um, exclusive ones. I was pretty sure there's a whole bunch of exclusive um, steelbooks that came out today for all the um, the new 4K ones. I don't see them right here. Yeah, maybe they don't. Let's see on this side. This is all the 4Ks. The other ones. Yeah, it's weird. I do not see any of those ones in here at all. Unless like they're already all gone or something. But it's very weird though. It's like I don't, unless I'm totally missing over them here, or they're all all sold out or something. But yeah, I'm not seeing any of those exclusive Pixar ones today in here at all. Well, I'm back in the front and I realized it's all right here. They're already all sold out. Like Finding Nemo, Steelbook, uh, Cars, Steelbook, Cars 2, um, what are the other ones here? Ratatouille, Steelbook, Brave, The Good Dinosaur, Inside Out, Finding Dory. Yeah, so all these ones are already are all sold out already. And they were all $34.99 for them. So anyway though guys, that was all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below though too. Let me know what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K if you guys picked up anything today. Also be sure as well to let me know what you guys thought of all the DVDs and Blu-rays and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video. If you guys have seen any of them, you know, what you guys thought of the films, or if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though guys, now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first ones I got here are from Arrow Video, and this is Hellraiser and Hellraiser 2. Both these ones have brand new artwork on these ones inside though they have the original um you know poster artwork as well so you guys can switch them to the original images the original you know uh, posters for these movies are so cool though these are movies though that always like extremely creep me out you know I, I like something about like the character pinhead you know as the the sequels went along though i felt like they um I don't know, I feel like even like the later sequels, I still liked parts of them. I really did, like even like Hell World, I thought that was like one of the better like of the later sequels. I always really liked that one. And like here's a poster artwork for Hellraiser 2. But these ones though, these were the additions that were originally in the, uh, you know, the trilogy collection that, um, you know, our video put out. I think it was maybe like a year or so ago, a little over a year or so ago, they came out, you know, that, that they released. And these ones are like standalone releases because that edition is, you know, long out of print you know, that particular version of the U.S. one. But on here, though, these have the uh, 2K restorations on these ones. Both the movies look great. And feature-wise, though, uh, some of the features on uh, these ones here are on the first one. has a commentary track on here with the director, you know, Clive Barker. Commentary with Barker and actress uh, uh, Ashley Lawrence. Uh, uh, Leviathan, the uh, story of Hellraiser, brand new uh, uh, version of the definitive documentary, The Making of Hellraiser. Also has on here, like, vintage featurettes on here about the, the makeup and all that kind of stuff. Image 
Woods Gallery. Uh, also on the um, the second film, though, he has a Conte track with the director on this one and the writer Conte track on here with um, with act with the director, writer, and uh, actress Ashley Lawrence. Has on here though, um, how, uh, Leviathan: The Story of Hellraiser, Hellbound Part Two, the new, brand new, definitive uh, documentary on the making of uh, the film. On this one, also let's see some of the other ones on here. It has on here Under the Skin, Doug Bradley on Hellraiser, you know, uh, two, as well as on set interview with uh, Clive Barker, and then on set interviews with cast and crew, behind the scenes footage. So lots and lots of features on these ones. When it comes to the movies, though, they, they, like I said, they are such creepy movies. I absolutely love these movies. And essentially, though, it's about the character of Pinhead and the Centibites. And the first one ends up getting unleashed because of the puzzle box, and then the family that ends up moving into the house. It was the one's brother. And essentially, they're always kind of hard to explain, but essentially, though, uh, you know, he's kind of been sacrificed to Pinhead, but he's trying to stay alive and he's trying to, you know, lure in like uh, victims so he can kind of come back. That's essentially what it is. And the one's uh, daughter that ends up moving in, like his his niece, she kind of gets like lured into by Pinhead to the whole thing. And the second movie though is her actually going into hell, you know, and like you know encountering you know Pinhead and the Cenobites in hell. And I really love that the second one. I feel like it's a really really strong sequel. The third one is a really strong sequel as well which hopefully they release a standalone one of that as well down the line also, it would be cool if they released some of the sequels as well, like the ones after Part 3. Because like I said, the, the the later ones, they weren't perfect. You know, after Part 3, they weren't like absolutely amazing all around. But there was some really, really cool stuff in them. And, you know, um, you know, uh, Doug Bradley always did an amazing job playing this role. Even the newest Hellraiser movie that came out, I thought was okay. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Arrow Video as well. It's a movie here called In the Aftermath. This is a really interesting movie because this is... Um, um, it, uh, part of the movie is an anime, and then they um, ended up. There's basically the it, cu it cuts from like live action footage to the anime footage, of uh, you know this animated footage, which was really like beautiful animation. And it's basically though about like the, it's set in a post apocalyptic world, and it's like this girl with this egg who's kind of going around this the landscape and like encountering like this guy, and it's kind of like a, so basically a survival story about surviving at the end of the world, and that's kind of what it is. But it it kind of cuts to the footage that's like out in the desert and these like dilapidated buildings and these people that they're coming across and everything. And then it cuts to the anime footage, which like I said is really, really well done. On here though, it has a brand new 2K restoration on this one. Really, really great transfer on this. Also has on here though, The Path to Aftermath, a newly filmed interview with the producer on this one. Apocalypse Then and Now, a newly filmed interview with star Tony Marks. Prefer the Aftermath, the influence on the Angel's Egg, a new appreciation of um, Marimu Oshii's original film anime um, on this one as well as a still and poster gallery and this one also has reversible artwork which has um the original poster artwork for this one as well and also in here too there is a um, booklet which has you know some pictures from the film and some facts and stuff like that about the production and all that kind of stuff as well and then the um oh yeah also too in hellraiser 2 it has an ad in here because they just announced that they're going to be releasing robocop uh, uh you know a super alternate special edition uh, that they're going to be putting out of robocop which i cannot wait for that one it has like a whole lot of brand new features and everything on it the next one here is from um, Arrow Video as well. It's a movie here called Who Saw Her Die? And this one is a really cool giallo film. This one too has amazing music. Like I absolutely love the score on this movie. It was like so well done and like this creepy eerie score. But it's basically though about this girl that um it's this killer that's killing these kids. And the beginning of this movie, though, this one, um, this one, you know, this guy's daughter ends up getting uh, killed. And it's essentially about him trying to track down the killer. And then it's like him with his ex-wife. And, you know, they kind of had a bad falling out, but they're kind of together again, trying to track down this killer and everything. And it's just basically a whodunit kind of one. And it has a lot of, like, serious mysteries, too, behind it. And, like, it's kind of like one of those ones, too, where you kind of, they, you know, they always do, with Jala films, they always do a good job, too 
too, making you kind of think, oh, could this person be the person behind these murders? Could it be this person? They're always kind of like twisting it around and all that kind of stuff to kind of confuse you and everything. This one has on here, though, a brand new 2K restoration of the full Italian version from uh, the original 35 millimeter camera, camera negative on this one. It has the uh, um, also has uh, the version in English and Italian for soundtrack wise. Has a new audio commentary track on here with a uh, critic, Troy Harrowworth, as well as I Saw Her Die, a new video interview with the director on this one, as well as uh, Giallo and Venice, a new video interview with author and critic uh, Michael McKenzie. And like I said, it, uh, it also has the, uh, for tr it has the trailers too. It has the Italian and English theatrical trailers, as well as an image gallery on this one as well. There's also a, um, booklet in here which has some pictures from the movie uh you know stills and facts about the movie and all that kind of stuff as well in this one and the last one here is from arrow video and this is from the arrow academy line this is one that i just wanted to let you guys know was available this is a film that's directed by billy wilder and this is uh the major and the minor here and this one um you know stars uh gina rogers and ray Milland. and this one here uh feature wise has a brand new uh restoration from the original uh, uh negative from by arrow films has a new New uh, audio commentary track on here with film scholar Adrian Martin uh, has on here though a newly filmed video appreciation by film critic Neil, Neil uh, Sinyard, as well as an archival interview with Ray Milland, Milland and as well as a rare hour-long uh, radio adaption from 1942 starring Ginger Rogers and Ray Milland Land. on this one. It also has an image gallery, theatrical trailer, and also has a reversible artwork as well for the uh, original poster image on this one. There's also a booklet in here here too which has you know some pictures from the production and all that kind of stuff as well so some really cool uh new releases here from arrow video and also coming out soon too which i can't wait for that one is they're gonna be releasing uh hills have eyes 2 you know the you know the not the uh, remake sequel the original one that uh, Wes Craven directed, and it's got like a brand new transfer and a whole bunch of new features, so I cannot wait to uh, review that one. Uh, the next one here is from Lionsgate, uh, um, and this is a movie here called uh, Dead Water. This one stars uh, Casper Van Dien, uh, Judd Nelson, and Griff First, which I was really excited to see Griff First in this movie, he, and he's like throughout the whole movie, he's one of the main stars. And Griff First, though, I, I've been friends with him for a long time. He directed, um, you know, Go Shark, which I acted in, and he's acted in lots and lots and lots of movies. But in this one, he has like a really great like large role in this movie and it's basically though about his character who was um he basically was you know a marine who kind of you know is out of the war and everything and kind of is going through like um post-traumatic stress and everything because of kind of what he went through and um He's kind of like, um, he's invited to go out on a boat with his wife and, you know, and Cass Vrandi's character, who's his friend, and he invites him out to go on this boat, and he's kind of like not sure if he really wants to do it, but his wife is saying, you know, you, re you really need to get out, and we really need to do something, and kind of try and take your mind off of everything, and kind of just have, a, like, some time to relax and everything, and of course, though, they go out there, and it's kind of like, um... His character, though, is immediately having just sort of being out there. It's just a it's sort of a tense situation. He doesn't feel too good about it, and especially like being out there like that, out in the water. And it's just not, not something he really, really wants to do. But he's trying to because his wife is telling him how he really needs to try to do things again and everything. But what what basically goes on here, though, is Judd Nelson's character is somebody that comes by on a boat, and it's kind of basically what it is: is his character is not good, and it. it basically something happens and Griff versus character he has to go and kind of like you know uh, you know use this training and everything and kind of save from what's happened that's all kind of all I can really say in the movie but it's one of those like super tense thrillers acting wise too everybody did a really good job on this one like I said this one here is Deadwater uh, from Lion's Gate and the next one I got here is from uh, Universal, and it's a movie here called The Dead Don't Die, which is directed by Jim Jeremouche. And this one, though, you know, is a very different movie for Jim Jeremouche, because, like, you know, he did, like, Coffee and Cigarettes and, you know, Broken Flowers. And his movies are kind of more like um, comedy dramas, more like art films, so like, a little different than this kind of movie, because this is like a zombie film, zombie comedy, but, like, you know, with, with what Jim, Jim Jeremouche has always done, though, is he has, like, these really big-name actors in his films and, like, a lot of, like, 
people like in here he's like Bill Murray, Tilda Swinton, Steve Buscemi, uh, Caleb Laundry Jones, uh, Iggy Pop, Rizza, Selena Gomez, Adam Driver, Chloe Sevigny, Danny Glover, Rosie Perez, uh, Sarah Driver, Cara Kane, uh, Tom Waits. Tom Waits is great in this movie. And it's basically though all set in a small town and there is a zombie outbreak going on. Like zombies, like people are coming back from the dead and you know Bill Murray and um, you know Adam Driver both play the cops in the town in the small town. They're pretty much like some of the only cops there. And they're kind of going around the town while they're noticing little by little that there's weird things going on in this town. And Selena Gomez's character is kind of coming through, driving through town with her friends, and they're kind of stopping off in this hotel. So they kind of find their way into this town with all these things going on. Like uh, Tom Waits is kind of the homeless guy who's kind of wandering through the town and kind of like does the narration for the movie as well. Uh, like, um, and let's see who else was. Uh, I think Steve, Tilda Swinton though is a character who like um, is really into like samurai swords and everything, and like um, she they, they, every, every character like has like these you know quirks to them as well which I really like it it still has that Jim Jaramouche vibe to this but it's essentially though about the town in there going through this zombie outbreak and then Bill Murray and you know Adam Driver's character kind of driving through the town dealing with that these things as they're happening and there's like really kind of out there kind of dialogue they even make like um self-aware kind of dialogue like um like um Bill Murray's character is like saying earlier in the movie oh uh, things are, are not no Adam Driver's character says I know things are not going to go well and Bill Murray's character is like well how do you know oh I read this script and like, like they, it's like it's like a total self-aware kind of movie and I, I don't know I really like this movie uh, and if you guys like Jim Jeremish's movies it still has like I said that same vibe but it's kind of him with his vibe but making a zombie comedy which I think this is the first horror movie he's ever done but has on here featurettes it has a Bill Murray zombie hunting action star featurette on here behind the scenes of the of the dead don't die but this is to me I thought this was a really really fun movie I really really like this one a lot just this all you know fun film all around. And the next one I got here is from Paramount. It's a movie here called Bottom of the Ninth, which stars Joe Mangiello and Sophie Vergara. And this is basically, though, about Joe Mangiello's character, who is, um, it's kind of cool, too, to see both of them together because they actually are both married in real life. But essentially, though, his character in the beginning of this movie was somebody who was getting ready to go into the major, major league baseball. He's like, you know, he was everything was really looking up. But in the beginning of this movie, though, something ends up happening and he ends up getting arrested. And, it, you know, because of that, all those dreams and everything are not going to happen anymore because he goes to prison for 20 years. I believe it was 20 years. And essentially, though, it's about him getting out of prison and kind of like um, trying to figure out exactly what he's going to to do and he and he still has these dreams of going into baseball but he kind of like you know he starts seeing people too from his past like his girlfriend played by Sophie Vergara's character and like he kind of like didn't talk to her really at all while he was gone and it's kind of like them reconnecting it's essentially about him kind of going back to this um uh field near nearby and kind of like starting to to play again and it's kind of like um looking as if there may be a chance of him actually going and doing what he dreamed of doing but there's people around him kind of coming back and like looking at him like well you can't come back because of the things that you did in the past and so it's sort of people who are kind of out to get him because of what happened in the past so it's kind of all the things he's going through trying to figure out too if he can stay and live where he lives you know where he is currently or if he's going to have to leave so it's kind of like all these kind of things that are going on in his life it's actually a really really well done a uh, character piece here but this one has on here though a behind the scenes featurette on this one and the next one i got here is from warner brothers they sent over a free copy of this one to let you guys know that this one is available this is a young sheldon the complete uh, second season here on dvd this is the show which follows around the character uh sheldon cooper you know who was the from the big bang theory you know, played by Jim Parsons, and Jim Parsons also is the narrator of this show as well, but it follows around his character when he was a kid, so this show is a prequel to The Big Bang Theory, though, but it's only following around, you know, Sheldon Cooper's character when he's a kid, and it's, you know, with him, you know, and his, you know, uh, brother and sister, and his family, and his, you know, his parents and everything, it's kind of, you know, if you guys know The Big Bang Theory, though, Sheldon Cooper is super smart, like, highly, highly intelligent, and he was super smart as well as a kid, so it's kind of about him, you know, all the things that he's going through as a kid, 
kid and kind of like the problems and the family life things that are going on and the, and the kind of stuff that goes along with him being like super intelligent and like in school and everything. It's a really, really fun show. Annie Potts is also in the show as well. I've always been a fan of Annie Potts, you know, ever since like as, as I was a kid, you know, from Ghostbusters, but she's been in lots and lots of stuff. But this is a really, really fun show. And it's also filmed, it's not filmed like um, Big Bang Theory where it's done like, you know, um, you know, like in front of a live studio audience with like a lot of different cameras. This one's done like single uh, camera wise. This also has in here though a little episode guide in here which tells you what the episodes are about in this one here as well. The next one here is from um, Warner Brothers as well. They sent our free copy of this one to let you guys know as well that this is available. And this is a show that airs on TNT. And I believe there's going to be a sequel to this, a sequel series to this I, I was just reading. But this is called The Alien Alienist, which, uh, you know, stars... Um, Dakota Fanning in here, uh, Luke Evans, and then uh, Daniel Bro Brule, I believe that's how you say his name, who's been in a lot of lots and lots of stuff. But this is essentially though about uh, Luke Evans' character, who is like a. Um, I'm trying to make, trying to mix it up now. He was a um, a portrait artist who would draw. Um, you know, if there was like a crime scene and someone died, because this takes place in like I think it's like 18. 1890s or like the early 1800s or like late late 1800s I believe and there's in the beginning of this movie though there's this this kid that's found dead and um uh Daniel Brule's character is like um is like he's like an alienist who works for the cops and he kind of in, like works at a mental hospital as well and he's kind of talks to like um people to seeing if they're crazy and like works with the cops to try and like solve certain kind of cases. I guess that's how you would explain it. But essentially though, he finds out about this murder and he calls in uh, Luke Evans' character to um, come and be the sketch artist because like he doesn't have access to the crime scene and Luke Evans' character is the only one who can go. And it's basically, he draws this crime scene and it's this brutal thing that had happened. And it's essentially though about both of them working together to try and like solve this murder that's gone on. It's a really, really like, um, well put together show uh very very like grim subject matter and everything in here but really really well acted on here this also has some uh, featurettes on here like inside the episodes and the making ofs on this one also in here too it has a episode guide as well like i said though there's going to be a um i believe a sequel series to this as well and it's also a pretty different show for tnt um i would say as well and the next one i got here is from rlj entertainment this is one i was really excited to watch and this is i got the hookup 2 and this was actually a really fun movie i have not seen though the original film in years but i remember really loving it you know of course it stars master p and the original one he like got into this thing of selling uh, stolen cell phones and everything this one has that kind of vibe as well but this is basically though about you know um the characters are back now and they're both running a um a uh, fast food restaurant but also it, it they also do like credit checks so they kind of like do help you with your credit and everything but again this movie though uh dc young flies character and this other guy they ended up like stealing these uh, well, well first what happened it's, it's kind of confusing though because like at first these uh, cell phones were stolen and then uh dc young flies character and the other guy ended up stealing the cell phones back because they're these really valuable cell phones because the uh, restaurant in the movie is um looking like it's going to go out of business because they need money to keep it going and like these people want to buy it out from under them and it's a, kind of all this stuff's going on but because they ended up you know stealing these cell phones it kind of causes all this drama for them so that's kind of what it is they got a lot of the characters though from the original film coming back making cameos there's also a lot of cameos from like instagram uh stars in here uh you know um actors and all kinds of rappers and everything making cameos in this movie i i really like that one one actor I really loved in here who was also in the movie Meet the Blacks uh, he's in this one um, playing a cop and like he is he is so good like every line he does is perfect and like he he's like steals the show on everything he's ever done like especially in Meet the Blacks but also there's a lot of extra stuff with him on the um, like at the end of the credits there's like bloopers and stuff and like his stuff is great like is like absolutely amazing he is like so hilarious like the kind of stuff because you can tell I'm pretty sure he like improvises a lot of it and he is like so great but to me i thought this was a really fun movie you know, it's not like perfect all around or anything it was cool too that romeo was in the film as well because you know they were together you know in um 
the show that he, you know he had on on, you know, on Nickelodeon was uh, Master P play his father on that show. So it's kind of cool to see both of them together in this movie. But all around though, I thought this was a really fun movie. This has uh, deleted scenes and bloopers on this one. Uh, the next one here is from Cinedime. This one I literally just finished watching now, and this one I'm gonna try and explain the segments. This one I I really liked. I feel like every segment on here was good. Uh, and this one here is uh, Nightmare Cinema, and this one has is directed by like uh, Mick Garris who directed The Stand. And Joe Dante, of course, who directed Gremlins, the director of 30 Days of Night, the director of Midnight Meat Train, uh, the director of Wawana the Dead, and they all came together to, you know, make uh, this movie. And it's all tied together by people going to this uh, movie theater. And like they, the one character, it's they said that they go from character to character going to this movie theater. And like they see like their name up on the screen, you know the uh, marquee outside. They go in to watch this movie, and it's kind of like what led them to this theater. And the theater is run by uh, Mickey Rourke playing this like evil kind of like guy, who's like you know the projectionist there. And it's essentially though like one of the segments was um, like a horror kind of um, one about like a killer out in the middle of the woods, uh, you know, chasing after this girl and like. Um, and it deals with like these little bugs kind of thing. And there's like a lot of twists to this one. And one of the other ones was, which I think was, might have been my favorite, was the plastic surgery one about this girl who had this scar on her face, whose boyfriend, you know, they were getting, she was getting ready to get married to her boyfriend and the boyfriend has all this money and he's like, oh, I'll get you this surgery to get rid of this scar and, and because I know it's bothering you. And of course, when she goes to this place, and the doctor too, the guy who played the doctor was amazing. Like he was great. And I feel like he's from other things. I need, I needed to look him up though but he plays the doctor in here and like you know basically though it's not a good place get where she's got this plastic surgery done and there's some really weird stuff happening uh, the other one was a like a possession story uh, about about at this uh, co you know, this convent uh, another one was like um, this woman the, the one was in black and white I really like that one as well going to um, go to this doctor to talk to like a therapist and like when she's there, it's, it, like I said, it was all filmed in black and white, and she starts seeing weird things, and like people sort of change, like people's like faces change, and there's like dirt and all this grit all over the walls and everything. Like that was amazing. I I seriously wished so much that this had features, because I would love to have seen like behind the scenes. Like like this is one of those things, like you know, there's certain movies where you really want to see behind the scenes. Like this is one of those ones where like you desperately want to see behind the scenes, like the making of this one, and. And then the last one, which I feel like is my favorite, is like tied with the um, the 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 one with the plastic surgery, was this kid who's going, you know, went to like a was leaving a school practice of like um, playing the piano and he ended up, you know, his parents ended up getting killed by this like crazy guy who was in their car and he wakes up in the hospital and when he wakes up in the hospital he starts seeing dead people and that was a really strong segment. Like that was one of those segments that I feel like could have been a whole movie. Like that was really well done. Honestly though, I'm going to be honest here. There's a lot of anthology movies lately and a lot of them are really bad. I'm going to be honest. They're not great. You know, they're, they're, they have segments in here that are like one that are all right. This one, honestly, was is 100% worth watching. I was really impressed with the segments on here. But I mean, like, the, the directors on here are all great. Also, Richard Band did a lot of the music, you know, who did stuff for, like, um you know, the uh, Ghoulies and stuff like that and lots of different movies. And I really liked his music. I think it was probably some of the best music he's ever done. And, you know, I've really loved his music. And it was some of the strongest stuff. He did an amazing job on the segments that he did the music for. But highly recommend you guys check this one out. If you guys have seen it too, let me know what you thought. And the next ones here are both from Dark Force Entertainment. You guys can order these ones exclusively from their website. And these, these are two releases here. And these ones also both glow in the dark. Now take a look at these ones glowing in the dark. And here's Here's a look at these ones glowing in the dark here. These are really cool how these glow in the dark like this. And it says Gates of Hell. And you see the character here in the front. The uh, the monster here. But really cool feature to these ones. Yeah, it's so really cool how these glow in the dark like this. And they're also raised out a little bit. Like on the slip cover, it kind of raises out on the side. You can see like the um, how they have like an indentation in them into the slip covers. These are really cool releases on these ones. Uh, Breeders, though, this is one I remember the cover of this one as a kid. Like I always remember seeing this one in the store. I think this one released in 1997. So I always remember seeing it like in like Hollywood Video and Blockbuster that released to it. Because on that one, it was like a VHS and the tape like came out really far the image of the um, creature. This is basically though about this um, meteorite that ends up coming to Earth and 
it's basically though about this girl who's like um kind of wandering around in this it's all like in this college campus kind of area and like where you know everywhere she kind of goes around there's this creature it's lurking around as well and there's some really really creepy stuff with this creature but basically though it's kind of like people around on the college campus are getting killed off one by one by this creature and um it was actually a really fun movie it was one of those ones i never actually rented it when it first came out like i don't think i was allowed to rent it and then like um I think because it came out like 97. So then like a little bit after, you know, DVDs came out and then a lot of the stores started getting rid of the tapes like a couple years after, you know, so you didn't see it. So I, I totally missed ever seeing this one. There's another movie called Breeders that was from the 80s, but this is a totally different movie though than that one. And the other one here is a double feature here, which is The Gates of Hell and Cycles from, you know, Cycles from Texas. Gates of Hell is directed by Lucio Fulci. These ones are um, more grindhouse style and like their looks and everything on the transfers and everything, but still look really good on these ones you know if like I said they have like scratches and stuff so they still have like a grindhouse kind of vibe this one here since this one um some of it was like in video like the opening credits and stuff those are like in um sort of standard definition the opening credits but everything else though when it comes to the actual movie I think it's not like the perfect transfer but I feel like it's the best this movie has ever looked you know uh you know quality wise and everything because it has on here a brand new HD master with a sense of restoration so I feel like it's the best that this movie has ever looked before and like I say too um this is the whole line that they're doing of these ones with these uh glow-in-the-dark covers they also released uh Dead Pit which I don't think that any more of those are available uh currently I don't know if it will be more of those ones down the line that was a really fun movie as well but like I said one of you guys know that these ones are available from um, from the uh, you know uh, Dark Force Entertainment uh, website. The next one here is from uh, Movie Zing, and this one you guys can order from the Movie Zing uh, website, and it's also a release from Fox. And this is a show that airs on FX, and this is a What We Do in the Shadows, the complete first season here on DVD. This is actually a fun show. This is based on the film What We Do in the Shadows, and which was a film from a couple of years back. And and the way the way the film was shot was like a documentary following around these vampires and kind of their life together and their roommates and kind of like all the kind of stuff they go through. But this one though is set in America. Uh, this follows around a different group of vampires and it's kind of all about they've been friends forever like for a long 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 time you know because they're vampires and it's kind of about their just sort of day-to-day -day life and kind of the things that they go through and it's all filmed the same style like documentary style like a crew is following them around and if you guys are fan of you know um what we do in the shadows of the film this like i said this has a very very similar vibe to it and you know i, I thought this was a really really fun series i don't know for sure i believe there's going to be a second season of this one as well it may have already started i'm not 100 percent sure though but if you guys are a fan of the film or a fan of the show and have seen it on tv though i want to let you guys know that this one is available and the next one here is from movie zing as well and it's also a rlj entertainment title and it's all hollows eve this is an anthology film from a couple years back i think this came out in um I believe originally released in 2013, I believe. And this one here was basically though about this girl who's babysitting these kids. They, you know, came back from trick or treating, and in their bag though, one of them had this VHS tape, this unmarked VHS tape, and they end up watching it. And it's pretty much though it has like you know uh, the different stories, but as the stories are going on, there are weird things that are going on in the actual house that she's at. And this is what's cool about this is though this is where the character uh, from the film Terrifier came from, that, that from the short film that was in this movie. I believe the short film was made like a year or two before that, and then it was included in this anthology. So if you guys are fans of the film Terrifier, which are actually making a sequel to that one right now, I think it's going to be shooting soon. Uh, you know if you guys are fan of that film, uh, this is the prequel film. So the first time you you know you ever see that character on here though feature wise it has a comedy track on here with the writer and director on this one but definitely one of the anthology films i'd recommend you guys check out the next one here is from movie zing as well it's also from um xenon uh, pictures i believe that's how you say it this is a movie from i believe this was from 2006 and i think i might have saw this one years and years back and it's called a uh, blood ranch this is basically though about a group of these friends who are like driving um kind of like on a road trip and they're driving um through like the middle of nowhere kind of area and they end up um 
kind of going on this road where they find out that the road is going to soon be closed down and they te te technically like they're going to be like the first pe like the last people going across this road and of course though you know that's not a good thing because it's kind of a road out in the middle of nowhere and when they're out there though they end up picking up this, this hitchhiker and then immediately afterwards this one guy like chases after them in this in this truck and, and like runs them off the road and it's kind of them strand out in the middle of nowhere and they like come across this house and then it's like of course you know that's not a good thing because it's kind of got like a um sort of like a hills have eyes kind of vibe about this house that they come across like a, a house of a thousand corpses kind of thing as well going on uh but this was actually kind of a fun one like i said i think i saw this one years back when this one first released but if you guys are fans of like you know uh hills have eyes type movies and that kind of thing uh definitely check this one out and this one here is from um uh, movie zing as well it's also from uh indie rights uh, movies it's a movie here called uh, edge of isolation this is basically though about this couple who is going out on this um it's when they were going out on this trip and, um, you know, uh, kind of like going camping out in the middle of the woods. But on the way out there, though, this crazy person like runs in front of the car and then like their co car gets like run off the road and hits into a tree. And then the, the, the guy, he ends up like hitting his head real bad. And they basically are found by this woman out who lives out in this house in the middle of nowhere. She takes him back there and like... Um, you know, right before, too, they left, the guy was having these weird dreams, and he didn't really want to go out, out to this area, and he has kind of, like, um, things in the past that were bothering with his mother and everything, too, so he didn't really want to go out on this trip, but, you know, uh, of course, though, like, he was sort of seeing things like the future a little bit, because when he gets to this house, though, when he wakes up, when, he's, when he wakes up in there in this weird house, uh, he kind of comes to find out the people that are in there are very peculiar, and there's kind of, like, um, all these really, really crazy things that are going on in this house, and it's kind of them pretty much trapped there trying to figure out how they're going to get away with all these other odd kind of characters that are there uh, another one that was pretty interesting one like I said this one is uh, a movie here called Eds of Isolation the next ones here are all from Mill Creek and it's a whole bunch of new releases here the one that you guys know are available here uh, the first one here is from their VHS slipcover line I really love these lines I have like a bunch of them up behind me and this one here is a movie that stars James Woods and Robert Downey Jr. it's called uh, True Believer and I love the way these are designed because because they have like the the sticker on here like a sticker on the tape has on here though um, chains uh, charge if tape is not rewound it has a sticker here that says like drama and it has like the back and even on the side too it's like you know has like the tape and everything they also announced um that they're gonna be releasing I think it's in November late November or early December I believe they're gonna be releasing uh, Santa Claus with I think it's Santa Claus with muscles the movie that stars uh, you know Hulk Hogan and I don't know if I ever actually saw that movie but they're gonna be releasing that one on blu-ray which I cannot wait for that one but in here though it also has the original artwork as well and I put this thing in here too to advertise that they're gonna be releasing soon as well I think these come out yeah next month they're releasing a bunch of the different Ultraman in like some steelbook collections here and a whole bunch of different stuff but on their website though they have more stuff about them if you guys want to find out more about them the next two here are um, two different ones these are both from one was from uh, I Spy was from 2002 which is based on the series I Spy which is, uh, stars Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson here and then they, the Blu-ray here of Duplicity which stars Julia Roberts and Clive Owen that one was from uh, uh, when was that one originally released it was I think it was 2006 maybe I can't, I can't remember for sure. I don't think it's... No, 2009 when that one released. Like I said, one of you guys know these ones are available on Blu-ray. And they also released uh, two more of the Andy Sedaris films. And these ones here are both um, actually a little a little later because, you know, um, well, these not not a much later though. These The one is from 1990. The other one is from 1992. But his movies are like super, super 80s action films. And they have like, like you know, crazy like effects and over-the-top kind of things. And they're really, really fun movies. And the two new ones that they released here is uh, Guns as well as uh, Do or Die. And both these ones on these have um, Introduction by the Director, Andy Sedaris, uh, Commentary Track, Behind the Scenes Featurettes, Trailers. And they also include uh, digital copies as well. And then all the digital copies you guys can watch through um, Movie Spree. And, and that's where, you know, the codes in there go through their Movie Spree. And this one here is... Um, also from Mill Creek as well as ITN Distribution. It's a movie here called Dead Don't Die in Dallas. This is a fun uh, zombie film. And this is about like um, this small town where there's a zombie outbreak. And it's kind of about um, the characters who are kind of uh, have to 
kind of hide out with these people. Basically, this preacher and his wife, and then um, the character, one character who's transgender, and they, and they like really because of their, their, you know, their views and everything, they really are giving her all kind of grief, and um, they all, but they end up having to uh, kind of survive together, and it's kind of about them surviving together and kind of fighting off the zombies and kind of all that kind of stuff that's going on. It's actually a very very fun uh, zombie film, and it's directed by uh, Israel Luna here. Like I said, this one here is called Dead Don't Die in Dallas. And these are some uh, collections here. And uh, yeah, and the um, these collections here also include the digital copies from the movie on you guys can watch on Movie Spree. But this here is um, a four movie collection here, which is a uh, House of uh, Hell, which has uh, American Horror House, The Dunwich Horror, uh, House of Bones, and Mask Maker on this one. And I believe all these films aired on the Sci Fi Channel. I know American Horror House was actually filmed. I believe they shot that one right after because it was the same company that did um uh ghost shark and haunted high and i think they filmed that um like directly after i think ghost shark or haunted high one of the two i know it was one right after right after i remember hearing them talking about that and then also this one here is a savage nature which has four deadly films uh yeah yeah four deadly films and it includes um flu birds monster wolf headless horseman and as well as wolf's bane here and then uh, these ones are really fun. These are all um, both um, uh, Airbud Presents. And this one here is a double feature, which has MVP and MVP2. MVT is Most value, uh, Valuable Primate and Most Vertical Primate. And these are like characters, of these monkey, the, the monkey, and um, going on these kind of crazy uh, adventures. And he, one is he's playing hockey, and the other one he's uh, skateboarding. I remember my brother watched these ones a lot when these ones first released. And it's same with Airbud. And these ones are newer. These these ones are actually from 2016, 17, and 18, and these are Pup Star. This is the Air Bud triple feature, which has Pup Star, Pup Star 2, uh, Better Together, and Pup Star World Tour, which is like a singing dog uh, series here. And then um, this one here is from uh, Cult Epics. And this is the re-release here from Cult Epics. And this is the two-disc limited edition here, which is the Manson, Manson Family Movies. And here I'll show the back to I'll cover the one thing up. But this has, it's, it's basically done like a um, recre recreation. And it was, when were these filmed originally? I think in, in, in the, um, maybe, I think it was... 78 to 74 to 79 is when they shot these and it was um is that when they were from i i, th I think so but it was basically, though, going to the actual locations where the mansions, you know, Charles Manson and, you know, the, um, the his, like, supporters all were, and all the Manson girls and everything were, and they were going back to, like, the ranch and all the kind of stuff, and kind of, because they, they believed, too, that he actually had a camera and filmed some things, and it was kind of, like, recreations of, like, what it would have been like, you know, there, and kind of them going around, and, like, it also has, like, um, Charles Manson's music in the background, and, like, the garbage dump song, and all that kind of stuff. It's definitely an interesting thing to watch like after you watched um you know once upon a time in hollywood like a, like a companion piece to that movie but also has on here as a feature though it has um the Shannon Tate's home movies, which were actual home movies, which is 60 minutes of her, like some behind the scenes kind of stuff. They were all, they didn't have sound on them though, but it was like her on set of some of her productions and everything. Definitely a very interesting release here. But this one, I believe, originally released in 2005 when this edition originally released. Now, the next four ones here, I just want you guys to know, were available from Eureka Entertainment. Now, keep in mind though, these ones are all region B locked. So you guys would have to have an all region, uh, region free Blu ray player to play these ones, or like I said, it would be in the area where it's a you have a region uh, B coding. Uh, the first one here, though, is a film called, um, an Australian film called The Chant of Jamie Blacksmith. And this one here is from the um, uh, Masters of Cinema series, and this is number 212 in that series. On here, though, it has the Australian version of the film, as well as the international version of the film. It has a brand new commentary track on here with uh, a film critic and writer on this one. It has a commentary track on here with the director on the Australian version. Uh, interview with the, uh, with the director. Also has on here, though, uh, the making of uh, blacksmiths talking about the casting of the aborigine uh, lead actors in the film there's also a booklet in here as well which has you know some um, facts about the movie some pictures all that kind of stuff as well in this release like I said but just keep in mind though with all these ones they're all like I said region B locked this has though a DVD and a blu-ray of the film the next one here is a movie here called uh, the third wife and this one here um, 
has you know the theatrical trailer on this one as well as a collector's booklet featuring a new essay by uh, David West uh, news editor at NEO inside of here though I'll show you guys a look inside it has the blu-ray and the DVD of the film as well as a booklet like I said with the essay in here with some you know some stills from the movie some stuff about the production and all that kind of stuff as well in this one the next one here and this is a really fun movie uh, here it stars Kurt Russell and Jack Warden it's called a uh, used cars this is a movie directed by Robert Zemeckis and this was from 1980 so this was a couple years before Back to the Future Back to the Future was 85 you know and this one has on here though a um Feature wise, it has a commentary track on here with Arts and Mechas and a producer Bob Gale as well as Kurt Russell. It has an isolated score track on this one, isolated score track of the unused uh, Ernest Gold score. Would you buy a used car from these men? Interviews with producer and uh, and Bob Gale. A radio interview with uh, Kurt Russell, outtakes in a gag reel, uh, radio spot, still gallery, theatrical trailer. So lots of features in this one. Also, it has a booklet in here as well with some you know some pictures from. The the film all that kind of stuff as well like I said this is a very fun uh, movie here and I always love Jack Warden I always think of him too from like Problem Child like he's a, you know he's the grandfather in Problem Child he's in lots and lots of stuff but that's like one of the things I always remember him from and then the last one here from um, uh, Eureka Entertainment is a movie here called The Incident and on this one though this has a, um, a brand you know this is a, a, a 1080p high definition digital transfer the UK debut of this one also has a um, commentary track on here with film critic uh, Alexander Heller Nicholas as well as a commentary track with the director and film historian Nick Reedman a post Q&A with director Larry Pierce filmed in uh, 2007 at the Wisconsin Film Festival and in this one as well it has the uh, blu-ray and the DVD of the film as well as a booklet which has like some posters from the movie and all kind of stuff about the production and all that stuff as well but like I said just let you guys know that these ones were all available from uh, Eureka Entertainment and the next one here is from Time Life Releasing. This is one I just want you guys know was available, and this is Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in concert here. And this has it's a three different collection set here. The first one though is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in concert one, and this is basically all about the groups coming back together for the Hall of Fame. This is from uh, you know has highlights from 2014, 15, 16, and 17, and it has on here though some performances by like um, Cat Stevens, Cheap Trick, uh, Green Day, uh, Lou Reed, uh, Pearl Jam, Ringo Starr, and also in. Here, though it has a booklet which shows you you know some of the performances that are in here and talks about them and that kind of stuff as well the other one in here is the encore collection and that here is a four disc set as well and this one has highlights from 2010 11 12 and 13 and in here this has performances by like abba alice cooper the beastie boys uh, donovan genesis heart so this is really cool for all these different performances together here and it has like i said a booklet in this one as well talking about the performances and that stuff as well and the last one in here in the set this one here is a um a three disc set and this one here is the 25th anniversary Rock and Roll Hall of Fame concerts. And this one here is from um, October 29th uh, and 30th in 2009. This one has like performances by Metallica, Ozzy Osbourne, U2, uh, Sting, uh, some of the other ones in here, BB King. So lots of different ones as well. This also has in here the uh, DVD collector's edition, which is like a um, to look like the Rolling Stones here, you know, uh, talking about the performances and everything. So this is a cool booklet as well in this release. Like I said though just one of you guys know that this one was available from um time life releasing and the next one I got here is from MVD and Kit Parker Films, and it's uh, the Noir Archive Collection, which includes nine films. This is uh, the third volume here, which is films from 1957 to 1960. I'll let you guys know the ones that are in this set. It has on disc one, it has The Shadow on the Window, then The Long Haul, uh, Pickup Alley, as well as The Tijuana Story, uh, She Play With Fire, The Case Against Brooklyn, as well as on the third disc, it has The Lineup, The Crimson uh, Kamano, as as well as Man on a String. Like I said, if you guys are a fan of uh, noir films, I want to let you guys know this is available. This is a nine uh, film collection here. And the next ones here are ones I just want to let you guys know were available. And this one here is from VCI. And this is a uh, Christmas Carol. And this one here has the original black and white version as well as the uh, optional, uh, you know, a uh, widescreen version of the film. It also includes the colorized version as well. It has a comedy track on this one. It has a before and after restoration comparison. It has some interviews on this one.
one. It also has Scrooge, the 1935 Seymour Hicks version as well. Like I said, this is a two disc set here. It also has a um, booklet in here, which has some information though about the film and the production and all that kind of stuff as well in this one. Also here is uh, a documentary from Virgil Films and it's a um, documentary here on Clarence Clemmings and this is Who Do You Think I Am? This is all about, you know, about his life and also about when he left uh, the spotlight and kind of to get away from it all and kind of what, what he went through, like a different side of that he what he went through. This one has on here though, it's a two disc combo. And this includes a um, Blu-ray of the film as well as a DVD of the film. Like I said, this one here is from uh, Virgil Films. And this one here, I believe this one had another name as well. I think it was called like Hell Cab. I believe when I was looking this up, because I remember seeing like that poster for that one. And this one here is um, called Chicago Cab. This is from a company here called uh, Liberation Hall. And this is um, a basically though about a cab driver and it's kind of all about the kind of people who come into the cab. And it's kind of like a coffee and cigarettes kind of movie where it's like, um, all the kind of characters, kind of vignettes, essentially, um, you know, about different people who kind of come into his cab and he kind of talks to them, kind of finds out about their, you know, life and what they're going through, some of their problems, and sees like kind of if he can help them. And certain times he can't help them. It's, it's, it's that essentially what it is. It has people in here like um, uh, Gillian Anderson, uh, John Cusack, Laurie Metcalf, uh, Julian Moore, Michael Ironside, uh, John C. Riley, Michael Shannon. So a really great cast on this one here. Like I said, one thing you guys know, this one's available and it's called Chicago cab from Liberation Hall. And the last one here is a mockumentary film here called uh, Mock and Roll. And this one is from um, Soundview. And um, this one here is basically though about a group of um, people who are trying to get to the South by Southwest, um, you know, uh, music festival. And it's kind of about... Um, you know, them on the road trip. And, and like I said, it's done like mockumentary style. So like, it's like a, a, a comedy, but you know, done as a documentary, kind of following them around and everything. And it's kind of about all the things that they go through on their way to get there and the kind of problems and all that kind of stuff as well. Like I said, just want you guys to know that this one was available. But anyway though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys.